I welcome you all for this wonderful video lecture series on operating systems. Today, our, our video lecture is file protection. Before the discussion, uh, I introduce myself. Myself, Shankar Ji, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science Engineering, RMD Engineering College, Chennai. So we, we in the last class, actually we had discussed what is file and uh, file attributes, file operations and so on. Today we are uh, uh, discussing about uh, file protection system, right? Uh, let's see what is file protection systems. When the information is stored in a computer system, we want to keep it safe from physical damages. It means it is the physical damages in the sense, it is the issue of reliability. And improper access, it is the issue of protection, right? It means that uh, actually we have stored information as a file in the system memory. We have to keep too safe for the file from the physical damage and improper access. Improper access in the sense the file may not be accessed by any other users. That is actually improper access, right? So these two we need to concentrate. This improper access is actually become a file protection, right? This physical damage is actually for reliability, but we cannot able to concentrate that for physical damage. But we should keep uh, safe our file from this improper access. For that, actually, we are going for the protection. In reliability, it is generally provided by duplicate copies of files. Many computers have system programs that automatically automatically copy the disk files to the tape at regular intervals. It means once per day or week or once in a month like. Okay. Yes. So the file systems may be damaged by hardware problems like errors in while reading and writing or power failures or head crashes while reading the head crashes, dirty bit values and the temperature extremes. The temperature maybe have a fluctuations and vandalism, right? So then the file may be deleted accidentally, right? So without knowing some, some uh, due to some reasons, maybe accidentally we may delete files and bugs in the file system software can also cause the contents to be lost. And uh, protection can be provided in many ways. For a single user laptop system, we might provide a protection by locking the computer in a disk drawer or file cabinet. In a larger multi-user systems, however, other than mechanisms are needed, other than these mechanisms should be needed. So we have so many types of access rights. Let's just see the types of access rights. The protection mechanism provide the controlled access by limiting the types of file access that can be made. Access is permitted or denied depending on the several factors, one of which is the type of access requested. Several different types of operations may be controlled. Few as given. The first one is read. It means that if you have a file, the control to the user is given only read some data or information from the file. That is actually read access. Next, uh, next one is write access. In this case, the user may read or write or the content or information may be rewrite the file. Next permission execute. The user may have rights to load the file into memory and execute it. Next, next access is append. Write new information at end of the file. If you have assigned the append access, right? If you have assigned ac append access on the users, the users may have a right to add new information at end of the file, not mid of the files, right? Yes. <laughs> Next to access is delete. The user may have a right to delete the file and free its space for the possible reuses. If you are giving only read access, the user may not have a right uh, rights to write information or execute information or delete any other information, any other access they don't have. He has only read access. He may have read some information from the file. Write means he is able to write or rewrite data on the file. Execute, the user has a permission to load the file into the memory and execute. Append, the user have control 
or access to write a new information at the end of the file. Delete, the user have rights to delete the file to keep free space, right? And the last access is list. It lists the name and attribute of the file. What's the file names? What file attributes that we can do? Right? Other operations such as uh, rename, other other accesses. These are all, uh, only limited has been listed. The other accesses are the user may have renaming the file, copy file from one location to another location, or he may uh, the user may have uh, rights to edit the file. Also, he has controlled all type of operations based on these types of access which is assigned to the users. He has to be used the file. The next one is access controls. The most general scheme to implement identity dependent access is to associate with each file and directory and access control list that is ACM. It's specifying usernames and the type of access allowed for each user. For example, A is the user. Then the username is A. If you assign only read access, so A comma R, it indicates read access for A user like that. Okay, and so on. When a user requests access to a particular file, the operating system checks the access list associated with that file. If that user is listed for the requested access, the access is allowed. Otherwise, the protection violation occurs and the user job is denied access to the file. If the ACL, ACL in the sense, access control list has some disadvantages. The main problem with access list is their length. If we want to allow everyone to read file, we must list all users with read access. This technique has two undesirable consequences. The first one is, Constructing such a list may be a tedious and unrewarding task, especially if we do not know in advance the list of users in the system. The second one, the directory entry previously of fixed size now must be of variable size, resulting in more complicated space management. To condense the length of access control list, systems recognize three classifications of user in connection with each file. The first one is owner. Owner is the user who created the file, right? Who, who is creator of file is called as owner. And next one is group. Group is a set of users who are sharing the file and need similar access as a group or work group. The third one is universe. All users in the system constitute the universe. I thank you all for uh, watching the lectures on uh, file access so far. I thank you once again for watching this uh, video lecture series. Thank you.